Before we get started, I want to make one thing clear. I love blackness. I love black people, black culture, black music, and I love black people from all backgrounds. No matter if you have a degree or not, whether you're a janitor or CEO, I love black people. And that's one of the reasons why I am pushing away this idea of black excellence. I am no longer interested in being black excellence, and I'll tell you why. Number one, black excellence is capitalism under another name. You can try to convince me otherwise, but I'm not going to believe you. If we value money, things, possessions, access, accolades, right, resources over people, if that is what makes a person valuable, you're not going to convince me that blackness does not align itself with capitalism, that black excellence does not align itself with capitalism. Black excellence is all about being exceptional, all about you know, beating the odds and going above and beyond and being extraordinary, right? And if you are ordinary or mediocre or regular or average, you are not seen as black excellence. We are only celebrating people who go and beat the odds and, you know, do the impossible. It's not about celebrating blackness in general. It's all about a certain kind of blackness, a better black, if you will. And this is very reminiscent of like the Blue Vein Society. It's very reminiscent of white supremacy, that if you don't have access to these things, if you don't have these things, if you don't have clout, then you don't matter. What I also find it, what I also find frustrating is that we're aligning with a system that literally oppressed us. We're aligning with a system that thrives today because of the enslavement of our ancestors. And so we are trying so hard to be accepted by whiteness that we are willing to cut off our blackness or put down parts of our culture that aren't seen as aesthetically pleasing or as seen as close to whiteness as possible. And so for me, I have to question a system that requires me to be half of myself or maybe one fourth of myself or one sixteenth of myself to be seen as valuable, worthy and loved. So no, I'm not interested. Another issue that I have with black excellence is that it requires you to compete with other people, right? It requires you to compete in a competition that really doesn't exist. Just like the Hunger Games, like how that was manufactured, they were fighting in a big dome and people were watching, watching the infighting, watching people slaughter each other for entertainment. It's the same way with black excellence because it is capitalism. The powers that be, that majority, they're not ever going to see see us as equals they're not it's just not going to happen and yet we are still fighting each other clamoring for the top spot of being black excellence as being the exceptional black ex being the exceptional black person being you know the wonderful negro so to speak right and so we're willing to do all these things in the name of whiteness in the name of aligning ourselves with a system that is oppressive to our people we're not going to win the game is rigged we need to stop playing it also the majority doesn't care the majority doesn't care. Literally, the founding fathers were not even thinking of black people as equals or as people. We weren't even seen as whole people. And yet we think that somehow we can win our way or work our way into their good graces. And I'm just not willing for myself to do all that work and labor to be accepted by people who were my oppressors, who are my oppressors. I'm not interested in that. Also, the system is evil. The foundations of this country are that of exploitation, killing, robbing pillaging, right? Like, this is what our foundation of our economic system, of what we find as ideal and celebratory, it's really evil and violent. And I don't want to play a part in that. I'm not interested in being black excellence if that's what that requires. So even with the competition, you see people saying, oh, there can only be one. And the reason why there can only be one is that the powers that be created it that way, right? So if you're going to have an end with, you know, the powers that be that oppressed you at one point, you have to play their game. You have to play their game to be seen as equals. And so for some people, they're not willing to do that. And people who want to be black excellence look down on people like that. Say, oh, it's your fault you're here. It's your fault you're impoverished. It's your fault you're disenfranchised. Just, you know, give up your blackness to be accepted by these people. And some people are just not willing to do that. And I think that I am one of those people. I'm just not willing to play that game because in, at the end, everybody loses. It's a losing game. If I'm playing a game that requires people to lose to win in my life, I'm not interested. I'm not interested because even if I win, I still lose. I lose myself. I lose my morals. I lose my value. Because if I saw myself as valuable in the first place, I wouldn't play this game. I find it interesting that people see themselves as high value based on the money that they have, the access, the resources, all these things. Even these men talking about high value men. What the heck does that even mean? When you don't see yourself as valuable in the first place. If your value is dependent upon how much money you have in the bank, how much how many women you have access to, how many people who are, you know, esteemed in your circle, then that means that inherently you have no value. It means inherently you have no worth. And that means that people are really just trying to earn their value and worth, which means that they don't see themselves as lovely, holy, sacred beings in the first place. 
I'm trying to come from a place of seeing myself as holy and sacred now so that even if I do acquire some things, it's not my value and worth is not determined on that. I, I also think that people hold so tightly to black excellence because they think that that is, that is it. That's all there is, right? That that's all there is to themselves. If they lose black excellence, who are they? What do they do now? What do they pursue? Like when they go to parties, what do they say now? Like, oh yeah, you know, I'm chilling. I'm on a sabbatical. Like, what does that mean? If, again, black excellence requires all of me, all of my culture, my history, my AAVE, right? My, my sucking of my teeth. If black excellence requires me to put down all of that for the sake of success, I am not interested. Another thing I wrote down, we are fighting, we are infighting about who is closest to whiteness. The measurements aren't our own. You're trying to be closer to your oppressor and the system is broken. Like, just think about this. We're fighting each other to be closer to our oppressor, to be accepted by our oppressor. How crazy, that, doesn't that sound crazy? That sounds absurd to me, that sounds absurd. I can spend that energy doing something else productive, something else that benefits my people, something else that benefits me. Because if I keep playing into a system that says that my blackness is not enough, I'm gonna start believing it. And then I'm gonna start oppressing other people. Even look at our own culture, our own society, even within the black community specifically, it seems like people want to own people, right? Like people don't wanna be free. They want to be the oppressor. And a lot of people are doing all this work and all this labor not to set themselves free, not to be of benefit to their communities, not to be helpful in any way. They're just trying to be the oppressor. They are trying to be the one doing the oppressing. So instead of clamoring to the top to change the system, to gut the system and start over and benefit other people, they're fighting so hard to become the one on top. No longer do they want to be the one on the bottom. They want to be the one on top doing the oppressing. And that's really discouraging to me that we're doing all this work putting all this energy into just looking like the people who oppress us, who are mean to us, who enslave us, because we want to be the slave owners now. It also breaks my heart when I see black people talking about how much they're worth, right? Oh, I have this money in the bank. Oh, I have this access and resources, because it reminds me of people being enslaved, how literally their work was their worth, how much work they did, how much energy they put into making other people money, literally determined their worth. And they're using that same measurement, their sa that same grading scale to judge themselves and see themselves as worthy. And that means, again, that they don't see themselves as worthy inherently. They think that their value comes from outside things. Paper, paper, that paper makes up their value, a made up currency that is founded on the exploitation and the harm of other people makes up their value. So you don't see yourself as holy, as sacred, as, as, as as valuable unless the oppressor puts value and worth on you. That's wild to me, that's crazy. Also, the system is broken. The system is broken and I don't wanna put a lot of energy into a broken system, hard stop. And a lot of us think that exceptionalism will save us and it won't. It goes back to respectability politics. There was this long conversation on the internet to people talking about, should people wear bonnets outside? One, who cares? It's not your hair, mind your business, right? But also, on the other hand, you think that because you're not wearing a bonnet outside, that makes you a better black person. That makes you more sophisticated, that somehow you are higher, that you are elevated above these peons who are literally just living their everyday life. But the truth is, is that the person wearing the bonnet is freer than you are because they are free from the white gaze. They are free from people judging them and saying like, oh, they're not valuable because they're wearing bonnets. See how, see how silly that sounds? They're not valuable because they're, not wearing, because they're wearing bonnets. They're not valuable because they're wearing bonnets. That's crazy. And if our value is dependent upon what clothes we wear, how we appear to people that, you know, we're out in the grocery store minding our business, but yet we're still trying to impress people at the grocery store, who sounds like they're in bondage? You or the person wearing a bonnet? Really think about that question. And also ask yourself, why do you care? Why do we feel like that if a black person does something that we would not do, that somehow you're bringing down an entire race? How was that possible? That means that we have to already be at the bottom anyway. We're trying to escape something that, some, that somebody put us. Like we're trying to escape a place that somebody put us in, right? So even these measurements that we're using to judge each other are not even from our own judgments. They are somebody else's opinion about what is acceptable blackness and what is not. There are people even criticizing people for wearing, for wearing afros, for wearing their hair as it grows out of their head, as if that is not professional, as if that is not feminine, as if the hair growing out of your hair is somehow flawed or not enough, that you have to have your hair straightened before you come out the house because then you'll be seen as enough. Does that sound like a system you wanna play in? It don't sound like a system I wanna play in at all. Another reason why I don't want any parts of black excellence is because we're all fighting to see who can be the most exhausted. Think about this. We're fighting to see who worked the hardest, who worked the longest, 
who did the most? Who did the most most exploiting? There's a B over here, so I'm trying to watch it. Who did the most exploiting? Like, who went above and beyond their requirements to be celebrated, right? And I don't want to play the game of exhaustion. I'm going to lose. <laughs> I'm going to lose because my body's not going to be able to st- sustain it. But also, I'm going to lose because I don't want to play. I'm not interested in being exhausted. I want to be free. I want to be happy. And I want to put en- energy into creating a system in which people don't have to die exhausted to be celebrated or die exceptional to be loved or valued or seen as enough. And I also think we really have to address the fact that for black folks, it's harder for us, right, to, to operate in a system that was not created for us to be seen as valuable and worthy. So on one hand, I understand I get it. But I think free, I think liberation really comes from us not wanting to play the game in the first place, because at the end of the day, we don't win that game. What do we gain in exchange for all that work and effort, exhaustion, illness, right, like loss of connection with people, loss of community? all to support and sustain a system that was built off of the backs of our ancestors who were enslaved. Just think about that. And in this competition, everybody loses. You lose a part of yourself. You lose your connections with people, right? And so who wins is the people up top, the people who benefit. It's, it's a game that's already rigged from the beginning. If I can convince you to work hard in efforts to assume my position, even though I'm not going to give up my position or show you how to get here or share my wealth, right? Then I win. I win. I get your labor. I get your time. I get your efforts. Meanwhile, you you lose your community, your family, your funds, your resources, everything. And then you feel prideful for maybe like five minutes, but then you look around and you have nothing to show for it except money, except paper, maybe, possibly, but maybe not. You take It takes so much work to acquire black excellence and so little to lose it all. It is such a fragile and elusive thing. And our idea of what black excellence is, is ever changing. Think about it. A hundred years ago, black excellence might have been you owning and operating a business or going to college. Now it's like, oh, do you have a master's degree? Do you have a Ph.D.? You had one hundred thousand dollars. Now do you have a million dollars? It's always changing. It's always changing. And I did a video a while ago called Black Excellence is a Scam because it is because it's scamming you out of your time, your energy, your efforts in exchange for something that is promised. But half the people never get More than half, more than half never acquire. They're chasing all these things, putting all their efforts and energy. And meanwhile, the system is benefiting off of your exhaustion, off of your labor, off of your time. Another reason why I gave up black excellence is because it's anti-black. If I have to give up my blackness, my AAVE, my cultural things, everything about me, it's anti-black. And I don't want it. I don't want to benefit a system that tears down other black people to uphold them. And, And that's the thing. That's the thing that sets it apart is that black excellence requires there to be losers. It requires there to be people who are less than. It requires there to be people who are poor or who are not exceptional, to be seen as exceptional. And I don't want to step on the back or the necks of other people in order to be seen as valuable or loved or enough. That comes from in here. That don't come from out there, especially not from a system that a system that was built on the enslavement of my ancestors. Black excellence is also all consuming, right? It never ends. It is greedy. And my husband said this um, earlier. He said to me, you know, greed can never be satiated. And it's true. Because capitalism is rooted in greed, it will never be satiated. There will always be more to acquire, more to obtain, right? Like, it's not enough that you had 13 colonies, right? You had to take over the whole the whole continent. It wasn't enough. You had to keep going. And we're still trying to keep going. We're still trying to become the best, to do more, to get the most people, right? Like, it's never enough. Greed is never satisfied. And black excellence is rooted in greed. At the heart of it, it is greed. It's about how much you can acquire, right? It's about how much you can consume, how many people you can hire. That's what black excellence is all about. It's not about the upliftment of blackness in general. It's not about the people. It's about individualism. And individualism is a very Western ideal. It's a very Western thing to think, oh, what can I get out of it instead of what can my people all together get out of it? How can I be a benefit to my people and my community? You're not a benefit if you're the only one benefiting. And again, if I have to dehumanize folks and see people as less than to be seen as valuable, loved, wonderful, I don't want to play in that game. Like, that's a losing game. I don't want to play a game where there has to be losers. Because this isn't a game. This is life. This is people's livelihood. This is people's worth and value. This is people's souls we're talking about. We're not playing Monopoly. Like, this is real life. We're not playing Uno. This is real life. There doesn't have to be losers for there to be winners. Everybody can win, but nobody wants to do the real work of figuring out how. 
there are people who have figured out how, but they don't want to listen to them because they're more interested in obtaining this ideal because they want to win. The winners don't want to give up anything. So they're not going to help you. They're not going to benefit you and tell you how you can win too. No, I'm going to keep dangling that carrot in front of your face and making you work for it for the rest of your life. And one thing that I've always hated about black excellence is that it determines who is unworthy of love, protection, safety, who's unworthy of being seen as human, right? Again, it dehumanizes people. And we do this all the time. Oh, she ain't nothing. I have five degrees. You ain't even got one. It's like, okay, what about these papers make you better than the other person? Or, oh, this person's wearing a bonnet outside. You ain't got no class. Look at me. I'm dressed to the nines to go to the mall, to go to Target. Like, it's always requiring us to compare ourselves to other people that we see as less than. If we are always using other people as a marker of success, if we're always using other people as a as a launching board into success, then I, I think that's evil. It's disappointing. There's a there's a better word for that though. It's not just disappointing, it's it's gross. It's disgusting. If I have to put someone else down to see myself as big, that means I'm not big in the first place, sweetie. That means that I'm not big. I don't think of myself as big. If I have to look at other people to say, okay, I'm doing better than this person, so I guess I'm okay, then I don't think that well or highly of myself. So the work that should be done is internal, but we're too busy judging each other and trying to you know, police each other that we can't even do the internal work of fixing ourselves. And because black excellence is capitalism by another name, Black excellence is a transactional thing. So if you don't benefit me or if you don't reflect what I'm trying to become, then you don't matter. And we see this all the time. We pass by people all the time. We give up on people all the time because we think that they either don't want it for themselves or that they cannot benefit us in any kind of way. That somehow if they don't have connections or resources or doors into where we're trying to go, that they are not valuable. We, we have made it so normal to dehumanize and devalue people that it is our default to devalue people. We pass by people without even thinking about their souls, their spirits, like the the sanctity of their life. Like we're willing to throw people away in order to benefit ourselves. We're willing to throw people under the bus in order to benefit ourselves. And it's disgusting. And like I said earlier in this video, black excellence does not leave room for all blackness. It doesn't leave room for the elderly. It doesn't leave room for the youth. It doesn't leave room for everything in between. It doesn't leave room for all classes, all educational backgrounds. It leaves no room. It is a very thin and narrow door that a lot of people cannot fit in. And if you can't fit in, then you're not in. You're not valuable. You're not worthy. It is not inclusive. It is very exclusive. And it's also exploitative. And I'm not willing to throw people away just because they don't fit into that door or fit into that mold of whatever black excellence is today. Because black excellence is always changing. It's always different. It's always it's always moving. And because that door is so narrow, we cut half of ourselves off to get in. Like, just think, we're fighting so hard to belong to a table that don't even want us there. When we could build our own table, when we could do our own thing, we don't even have to be in the same room as them if we don't want to. But we're so willing to align ourselves with people who don't like us. We are trying so hard for people to see us as worthy, who never saw us as people in the first place. We were not even human to them. And yet we're trying so hard to appease these people and see and force them to see that we are valuable and worthy. And it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Let it go and start loving yourself and loving your people, no matter if they can benefit you or not. Like we out here killing people, throwing people away, throwing people's whole careers away over stupid stuff, over money, over access, like over paper. That's crazy. And you are, your soul, your life is invaluable. There is no number that can be placed on your life. There is no value that can be placed on your life. There are no words to describe how holy and sacred you are. You are handcrafted by the creator of the universe. And you trying to put money on your worth and your value? That's it? That's all? And this, this money didn't even exist 500 years, 500 years ago? <laughs> So we judging ourselves based on a currency that didn't even exist. Like, it's wild. It's crazy. And the value of that dollar is always going up and down, right? Right now, I feel like it's going down. So if you want to attach yourself to something that is literally depreciating in value, go off. Go ahead. Because it's silly. It's stupid. Like, and you will lose in the end. You will lose. You will go down with the ship. The ship is sinking. You will go down with it if you tie yourself to it. And one more thing I want to say is that black excellence is not rooted in blackness at all. It is not rooted in blackness at all. 
It is rooted in the exploitation of your people. It is rooted in systems that seek to exhaust you. It is rooted in systems that seek to destroy you. It is rooted in a system that literally made this country what it is off of your enslaved ancestors. And for me to align myself with a system that enslaved my people, took their people, took my people from their land, enslaved them, gave them nothing afterwards, right? Continue to oppress them, continue to oppress them today is absurd. It's crazy. It's crazy. So if black excellence requires me to be anti-black, then no. No, thank you. Thank you. I see what you're doing. I celebrate you, but I'm not interested. I'm not, I don't want to be a part of it. I'm not interested. If black excellence is exclusive, I don't want to be a part of it. If it leaves no room for all black folks, tall black folks, fat black folks, right? Queer black folks, like black women, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Dark skinned black women. If it leaves no room for these people, for poor people, for disabled people, if it leaves no room for these people, I don't want to be a part of it. I'm not interested. No, thank you. So those are my thoughts on black excellence. It's a lot. <laughs> I feel very passionately about it. Hopefully you've probably seen it in the video, but I'm just not interested in aligning myself with a system that is a lie, that is a scam. And that has literally been a part of my enslavement in this country, my people's enslavement and oppression in this country, because that would be treacherous. Not treacherous. That would be, what is it? Is treachery the right word? No. That would be someone who stabs you in the back like you're, because that is betraying to me and my people. It's betrayal. Yeah, so those are my thoughts. Um, if you like this video, this is a TLDR version of a video I did a while ago. It was a live, and it's called Black Excellence is a Scam. If you want to check that out, check that out over here. Um, and really think about that, y'all. What does black excellence mean to you? Why do you attach yourself to it? And can we redefine what that means? And I think we can, and I think we should. So until next video, y'all, talk to y'all later. Love yourselves, love each other, love each other. See, each, see the soul in each other, see the life, see the value, see the light in each other. And I will talk to you all in the next video. Bye.